Welcome in Texas Tech Red Raiders. We are so excited for this interview with Jerry Glasgow, the 10th head coach of Texas Tech softball, entering in at a, such an interesting time. Shelby, we've talked about it so much uh, here on Seeing Scarlet, and a roller coaster is one way to put it if if you're just getting to know this softball team and what we're getting ready for this next season um so jerry glasgow really excited to learn more about you and the the experience that you've had so far as a texas tech red raider and what you have planned for us in the future we we want to say let them cook you know what i'm saying and we can't wait for you to do so and, chef and show us show us what you got yeah chef glasgow that sounds so so good um but yeah we're seeing scarlet let's get started with it and jerry tell us a little bit about you tell us what you know what red raiders need to know about jerry glasgow uh, I'm a lucky coach because I'm here and uh, we're just living the dream right now. Like every, every single day has been like, oh, I, I mean, <laughs> you've I, had, I, yeah, so a lot of crazy course, things I, happen already. You know, today we, we've had recruits and we, we had two kids on campus this week. We got two commitments and then I come in and I got this beautiful yeah. handbag yeah. from yeah. Patrick Holmes and welcoming you and it's got Aww. the emblema. And so, like oh my, my daughter, and my we're all fighting over it. So I think I need to order four. And <laughs> okay, anyway, keep five. Like, Understandable. So that's like little things like that every day seem like that are really exciting for us. And yeah. then the um, the community, the interest in the community, the support of the administration, the support of the whole athletic department, from the grounds crews all the way through the facilities mm -hmm. and electricians. It's been amazing. It's been. Uh, it's only been like. I think 35 days or 30 like really days. and it's been <laughs> so many things happen and we just it's just been exciting. yeah uh we are, are i'm sure going to get into all of those huge things that have happened um because when people think about <laughs> from the day that you were a texas tech red raider from that point forward it has been wow you have you're gonna have so many fun stories to tell like two truths and a lie is going to be your your best game um but tell us a little bit about your coaching and your origin story where did where did this all start for you well you know i started out this is what people don't know i was a hunting guide and so i was raising three daughters and i was a hunting guide and i would be gone every winter from november 1st till the end of february and uh, i ran a resort down in mexico and i took people quail and duck hunting and <laughs> So when my daughters got big enough to throw, play pitch and catch, Tara, the daughter coaching here with me, you know, mm -hmm. I come home at Christmas, she won't play pitch and catch. And I wanted my kids to be barrel racers. I, I was into horses. Oh, and, barrel oh, racing. Yeah. But she fell in love with the softball. And uh, I started coaching softball so that when I come home in March, I could connect with my daughters. Oh, and later so on, it became my connection to the community as I was a volunteer coach at the high school and the junior high. And. Uh, eventually, I, became, I worked my way up from assistant coach at the junior high up, and they gave me the head job. But at the high school, I was always a, a, a assistant coach and uh, very fortunate to work under uh, Lindell Zanotti. He was a um, president of the school board and a great coach there in John City, Illinois. And then from there, we started the Southern Forest Travel Organization to try to help girls get scholarships into college. And That's what's up. Again, we started that in 2000. And, uh, right. first team was in 2001 and uh, in 2004 we won the national championship and that was a very fortunate Castle. I had a pitcher on that team that went to Georgia and Casey Carroll was a, a great pitcher, a great academic she made academic All-American, won 90 games at Georgia um, and so that with that connection with Southern Forest I developed a friendship with Coach Lou down at Georgia and then the break of my lifetime came she started offering me a job like in 2003, like, hey, come to Georgia, okay. be the recruiting coordinator. And I think at first she was half serious. And then the more she thought about it, the more passionate she became about it. And I'd always like, hey, I like softball, but, you know. Maybe not. Yeah, well, <laughs> not this much. <laughs> I'm never, ever going to be a college softball coach, which turned out to be wrong. But <laughs> I, I, just, I would just Kids. laugh because I didn't never, ever see myself being a college softball coach. I just thought of myself as a hunting guide. Wow. And uh, and I thought I had the best job in the world, you know, being yeah. in the blind every morning or the quail field by. That sounds really nice. Every day. So um, 
but then the thing happened called the drug war that started in 2008. And uh, it started getting really dangerous in Mexico. And then they started kidnapping Americans. And my clientele was like high end, uh, very uh, wealthy, is a very wealthy, lucrative clientele. And um, you know, they were at risk to be kidnapped. So we shut the lodge down completely. And uh, I went home and, and called Lou and I said, uh, thought about it. If you need a, a softball coach at University of Georgia, I, uh, I've got two choices. I can go back to work for my dad on the on the farm, or I can go to work for you at Georgia, and I'd like to go to work for you at Georgia, and she gave me a job immediately, and I was able to uh, start that coaching crazy. college softball. So that's a, that was a huge break for Lou to have the vision and then the nerve. To yeah, get the, the confidence, the, <laughs> the bravery. The and, uh, you know, my first year at Georgia, Lou, uh, we worked really hard on our hitting. We went from 26 home runs in 2008 the georgia team had in 2008 um to 86 in 2009 and i think our offense went up like 100 runs and we made it to the final four the first year i coached college softball with coach lou now coach lou had been to the world series with southern mississippi mm -hmm. twice she started the program from scratch into in 1999 and went to the world series in 99 2000 with University of Southern Miss, so make no mistake about it. Like mm -hmm. Lou Harris Champer was an unbelievable coach, and Jerry Glasgow was just lucky enough to be standing beside her every day in practice at that point in my career. And uh, so we get to the World Series, get the Final Four. We did it again in 2010, oh, wow. and then in 2011 there was actually times in the season where I think we were definitely ranked in the top three. We might have even for a day or two held the number one ranking, but we had a really good team in 11. We got beat in the Super Regional um, by Baylor. And then in those <laughs> years in Georgia, we, we made it to the Super Regional five years and we're in the regional all six years. So, and from there, I went over to Texas AM as a hitting coach uh, in 2015. Wow. And then um, we made it to the World Series at 2017 at Texas AM. From there, I went to Auburn, and then two months after I was at Auburn, I went there in September and I, in November. Uh, Louisiana called and asked for the opportunity to, to talk to me about becoming the head coach there, and I hadn't applied for the job. Yeah, you know, and so it wasn't an interview. It was like they wanted to talk me they into. They were time. head hunting, yeah, and they said and, uh, we want you. And that was a very lucky break. Uh, wow. They wanted to win. They had to win. They just lost a really great coach in Michael Lotti. And he was a hometown kind of a hero. And the athletic director, you know, needed a, a, a coach that could win behind him. So that gave me my opportunity to be a head coach for the first time at this level. And I was already, I mean, I'm 59 years old, but I've only been coaching for 10 years. Yeah. So it's kind of a unique story. And it's kind of a, a story filled with lucky breaks. But that was a lucky You're break. You're just a hunting guy. <laughs> just a hunting a, guy. Right? And look Turned at you one now. of the best softball coaches in the to game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just you are pipeline. meant to be a red raider go from Yo. a hunting guide to a softball coach like red raiders are gonna love that story love this oh, yeah, I love yeah. That. well before i become a uh, before i started going to mexico i would come every winter starting like 80, 1981 1982 i'd come every winter to jayton texas which is just mm. like two hours uh east of here no way it's been that winter's in jayton astronaut post snyder Guiding <gasps> quail hunts. So I loved West Texas. It was the best quail hunting in America at that time. You're dang right. And, uh, I like it. I like running dogs out here in these pastures better than even in South Texas, which is kind yeah, of. Yeah, you can watch them run away for miles. For me, West Texas is the best quail hunting in the country. And so, and fueled part of my determination to get back here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, softball on the side meant to be we'll have to get you in touch with some of the i don't it's wild that that's what you you did before you got yeah. here but i know that some of the alumni parents i know that they go on like hunting trips and stuff they've i've heard anybody them talk about that's it. Gotta, i'm gonna uh, get you in touch with them to, <laughs> anybody got a quail ranch come come find me i'll, 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 I'll tell them to reach out to i'll do. tell them to reach out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Don't but do yeah, it a little while though, because I need to focus. I need. To yeah, you got yeah, things you got to do, Jerry. We'll do really it. Talk about it in <laughs> June of next. No, July of next year, right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. that's right. That's right. You're busy till then, but yeah. So I mean, we could probably talk about your coaching 
mm. tree from here, whatever, all your journey from here forever on a whole podcast itself. But obviously you talked about being in West Texas. So you end up deciding it's time to, to, to make the jump from Louisiana to Texas Tech. I'm sure that wasn't an easy decision, but like, what was it about Texas Tech once you got here to go through the interview process where you're like, no, this is, this is the time, this is the place where I'm ready to make that move. Like why, why Texas Tech basically? Yeah. Well, you know, is uh, when the job first opened, I think maybe it was a Saturday evening that Craig mm -hmm. uh, resigned. Mm -hmm. And so Sunday morning at 8 a.m., I'm at a ballpark scouting in Houston. Okay. And ironically, I was watching Haley Tony play, who was mm -hmm. the freshman shortstop. Yeah. Tennis. And by the way, like, wow. She is, wow. Like, We're going to let you talk, talk about her a lot in a minute. But everyone's yeah, talking about I Kate like this. Kate, everyone's talking about Maya Davis and Alana Johnson, but. They don't know about Haley Tony yet, but I'm telling oh, you, they go and learn. About I've heard someone they sent me a video. Learn. Someone sent me a video of Haley the other day, and I was like, "Oh, she's kind of a crank badass." Can we <laughs> yeah. She's going to be really, uh, really uh, the, the whole freshman class. Coach Snyder did a great job putting that class together. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's really totally. Good so I was sitting in the stands, and I got a call, and it was from the search leader, actually about my daughter Tara, who was mm. in Illinois, and she had. She had got pretty far along in the Ohio State search with the same firm. And mm -hmm. what do you think about your daughter at Texas Tech? Which she, you know, and so we talked about, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly and what was, you know, what she had that would be good and what she might lack on her resume that would keep her from being successful. And then those calls continued for like three days, so like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So each time they're telling me things about Texas Tech and, uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly when, how the whole thing, but finally one day they called and they said, Wait Coach, would you be interested in Texas Tech? <laughs> by that time, I've heard enough that, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like I already know, I already know everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe I, and so I think it was actually like Friday night late, and they said, Would you be interested in a Zoom call? If you're interested, we'd like to do a Zoom call tomorrow morning. And so it was yeah. really late in the process, and uh, mm -hmm. I did the Zoom call and met the, the committee that was on the search committee and the hiring committee and they were they were spectacular they were very impressive and then just everything i looked at it like man this is a this is a no-brainer this is a great <laughs> opportunity yeah. and this is exactly what i was looking for in the sense that i was you know if i was going to leave louisiana i didn't want to go somewhere that it was already a proven commodity in the softball coaching world i wanted to go somewhere to, to like write a story yeah. and prove that I could, um, you know, compete in a power five. And then also just, you know, show that I could build a program. Um, and, and I, everything I heard about here was like, this, this job would be easy. This is going to be a great job. <laughs> and so I, I got, really, you got a lot people, of good Jerry. things We've going your way. <laughs> they analyzed to the Matador club. When I heard about the Matador club, like that's what every coach in America is looking for right now. Mm. Where, and there's yeah. no coach that's not looking for, a matador club mm -hmm. and they had it extremely well organized extremely put together uh extremely you know up to date on exactly how and what and when and and then you go into the um you know the more you heard about the athletic department as a whole mm -hmm. and when you get on campus and you realize how motivated oh, wow. and how high the the team morale is of the athletic department from the you know the grounds everybody you ask to do something like yeah we got a coach Oh, we got that. We'll get it done. Uh, I love that. I've That's love at Texas. Yeah. You know, I'm a guy like I start. I, when I took the job, I come in like 24 hours. I'm in here. And when, <laughs> we know. We heard. <laughs> three in the morning, right? Like you are. Early every day. I'm in you my office at 3 a.m. At 530, there's three people come in. They're cleaning the floors. And they're, you know, and I'm like. <laughs> There's a little hey. lady. And I'm speaking Spanish to her, and I'm taking. The, I said, "I'll take the trash out if you'll, if you'll do this." No way. She's so cool, and so we just, we just went to work. I mean, and and I'm and I say everybody. We, we went to work like nobody could ever imagine, and in 30 days, I think we've uh, turned the softball world upside down with the things <laughs> that happened in our program, mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't an accident. We were, you know, like I said, I would literally go home and go to bed at, t at 10 o'clock and get back up at three and then I go home at 9 a.m. and take an hour nap and then come back and you know I didn't have a home so I love I'm, that you took it out you know a temporary crazy. room so like you know I, I don't watch tv I just sleep for an hour and then come back in <laughs> and go again and go to I'm yeah. exhausted and go back so 
it's been a whirlwind and uh this, we are where we are things look really exciting for the, <laughs> i the, say so <laughs> yeah. to say the least I season tickets yeah <laughs> get like, them. i heard there might be a waiting list already but get your name on there's there gotta be case. actually i think there is a waiting list so i'm gonna say Uh-oh. build more bleachers <laughs> yeah just let them know put, put those bleachers we've been saying we need to get some out build uh, seats like while, while we're now. here um let's talk about all this other but yeah stuff. yeah everybody suck middle of interview ad go to the Texas Tech website and buy your season tickets if you haven't already because they may be a waiting list right now but like he said they'll bring in more bleachers if they need to so go do it yeah when you talk about the whirlwind and this roller coaster that you've been on the the first 30 days which is like kind of when I think about a job (laughs) it's when you're okay things have settled a little bit um but it seems like event after event kept happening for this program when you think about the past 30 days where tell us what happened like what was your perspective of how these events were taking place um walk us through that because i just i don't imagine you having time for naps because of what has been happening um too much excitement it just feels like a lot (laughs) yeah well it's complicated and it's not something we can cover in an hour so Mm -hmm. we gotta kind of skip over that giddy up things just kind of like little you know like it leads to confusion, but in a world, you know, in a, as brief as I could put it was, yeah. you know, we, I took the job and actually they reported on rounding third, you know, it's amazing. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what the course was, but they reported I'd taken a job before you did. Actually, yeah. I, it was like six thirty in the evening, if I remember right. And like at five, I'd talk to the athletic mm. director of Louisiana and I talked to the athletic director here mm. who both knew each other well. And, um, Dr. Maggot of Louisiana had been Kirby's, uh, student academic advisor when they were at Kansas State. Oh my God! I didn't know that. You know, what that, a connection! How cute! You know, and so I had told both of them, I think it was a Wednesday evening, that you know what I'm leaning towards going to Texas Tech, but I want to sleep on it and wake up Thursday morning and make a final decision. I don't want to do it tonight. I want to make. I want to sleep on it. And both, you know, Kirby said I thought that was wise, and and mm-hmm. Dr. Maggot. And so they said, but if he, so, let's just go ahead and said if Jerry takes a job. We'll do a Zoom call with the Louisiana girls at six six fifteen on Thursday, and and then go straight to the mm-hmm. Texas Tech girls at six six thirty or six twenty five, like five ten minutes Oof. apart. Wow. And that was on Wednesday night at like four thirty, and then like six thirty, the phone my phone starts vibrating, and oh, no. everybody's calling, and you know I'm not looking at anything. I'm just sitting in the house, kind of thinking about everything. Yeah, and I had calls. So I look at my phone. You know, oh. I hear it vibrating on the table. I look at it, and Kirby's called, and Dr. Maggard's called. And so I, I take Dr. Maggard's call. He said, look, it's already on social media. that uh, You're taking the job at Tech. It's going crazy. And so that the girls, that's how the girls found out. Yeah, that's tough. Because they reported it. Yeah, so it's it's like tough. He said, you know, Dr. Maggard said, I'm going to go ahead and start calling our players now. At this, yeah. at this point, Jerry, I think we best to just <laughs> go and take the job. It'll be embarrassing to all parties. You know, if I didn't take it at that point, it was ugly for Tech. It would be ugly for me. It would be ugly for Louisiana. And I see, I agree. So kind of like as I was leaning towards taking Tech Tech, I thought I was going to take Tech Tech, but I hadn't said the, the final say. But once that all happened, it was kind of the decision. It like tipped the teeter-totter. Okay. And so Dr. Maggard actually called the players before I, I could. And then by the mm-hmm. time I, after I got home from him, I have a long conversation with Kirby. I ended up not getting all the players called that night and until the next day. So nothing was handled quite right right there. Um, and it wasn't anything that anybody could do. It just wasn't handled right because you like the players to all hear it first from me uh, yeah. directly. And yeah. then the tech players, likewise, the same, same. would like to have heard who their coach is from their athletic director and their coach. So we got off to a really tricky start, and that made it chaotic. Yeah. And so when I, I didn't have like a final exit interview with each of the players. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing I knew that I knew that Maya Davis, I knew wherever I went, Maya Davis was going to want to go on a transport and uh, transfer portal and follow me. Okay. And, uh, you know, I just called the kids and said, I'm going to Texas Tech. Um, you know, I, I wasn't, it wasn't a plan I anticipated three weeks ago or two weeks ago, but it, it's happened. And <laughs> yeah. And um, um, so then, over the next few days, you know, it's all written now who went on the portal and who didn't. And 
um, uh, Maya did go on a portal and, uh, and then ended up, we got, uh, Vic Valdez went on a portal and, mm-hmm. and Chloe at Rio Seto and Lauren Allred. So those kids really helped give me momentum here. I mean, that was a lucky break for me today. And it was a bad break for, you know, Louisiana, because you want the program to also do really well. It's very important to me that that program continues to do really, really well. I want it to do really well. Um, and they hired a great coach and a great person in Allison Habits. So bittersweet, the whole situation there. And then we, we begin to work the portal immediately, of course, as soon as you take the job. And then you have a fallout like you find out after you take the job. You don't know the situation with the status of the roster because you mm-hmm. don't talk about it. So I, I drive 24 hours over here and I find out uh, you know, there have been six or seven players leave the portal. And I talk to all the tech players and I realize gotcha. that like, some of these kids aren't real comfortable with Jerry Glasgow coming in. Maybe this won't be a good fit. How they want to know, like, is this a good fit? Is it not a good fit for them? In the and when the dust all settled, you know, we knew we were going to have to pick up a lot of players. And so we began to recruit the transfer portal really hard and mm-hmm. we want to upgrade the program. And, and, and I, from the very beginning, I'm like, we're going to go to the NCAA tournament next year. We're going to be a regional team. Everything we do to build the roster is going to be a regional a regional team. Um, and I've never coached when we didn't make a regional. In 15 years, I've never coached. You don't know what it's like, yeah. <laughs> so I know how to do it. And I know what it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. So we just started, um, you know, recruiting the portal hard. And then I think some of the, like, there was players that from here that once they realized what was coming, they realized maybe it wasn't the fit that they wanted. So they went on the portal and fun to find what they're looking for, which is what the portal's for. Um, the portal can be frustrating to us all, but it can also be a tremendous thing for the actual player. And uh, we, that's that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, from there, we just started. started well, from the very beginning, I, uh, I, you know, one of the first calls I made was to Nyjah. Uh, I believed I had an inside that I could maybe get at least a conversation with her. And uh, she referred me over to her management team. And I called the management team and went, went to work just like she asked me to. And I followed every step, everything he asked me to do from that point forward, including like, let's don't bother her for two weeks while she's in Japan and playing for USA. I called her and said, Hey, I'm not going to bother you. I'll be root for you. We'll talk business when you get back, but don't think I'm ignoring you. I'm just going to leave you alone and give you privacy and ability to focus on the national team. Your game. reality. Yeah. yeah. And um, obviously she liked that. Like that was oh, what she was I for. like that. And, uh, <laughs> we like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got her, and uh, that was, you know, by that time, now we're looking really good. And then uh, Alexa Lang <laughs> wasn't going on the portal, and I think yeah. when, uh, when the staff, when they made the full staff hires at Louisiana, she rethought the thing and decided maybe she did want to go somewhere else. And I don't know all the details, don't want to know all the details, but she went on the portal really late, and when she mm-hmm. called me uh, and said, you know, her, she, her, her home is only about five hours from here, her cool. boyfriend is about an hour and a half, two hours from here in Albany. Better. And, oh. uh, you know, we had a relationship. I had a three years. I couldn't say no. And I really didn't want to take seniors. I really did. I wanted to build a team with a two year plan or better. Yeah. But at that point, you know what? This is a piece we need. She's mm-hmm. a middle infielder that knows Hunter uh, Beach's defensive system. Okay. You know, we turned a nation leading 46 double plays, and she was in, in probably 30 <laughs> or 35 of those 46 double plays in the middle of them. Uh, at the second base position. And then she's been a a tremendous hitter with 13 home runs, both her freshman and sophomore years. And then come back again this year with a a 300 type average and, and nine, 10 home runs. Um, She's just a big RBI producer and her dad played college softball and her brother's the catcher for the Oakland A's. So she's got a pedigree of a a, a very confident and very competent softball player. So it made sense to me after I thought about it, let's, let's add her and we added her, I mean, really, it wasn't a matter of recruiting her. It was a matter of uh, just confirming that, yeah, we, we think it's a good fit, too. Um, mm. So that's kind of where we went. Yeah. To jump into the roster, you talked a little bit about it. When you're going into the process of recruiting a player, whether it's from high school or these transfer portal players that we're about to talk about more, what do you look for like as a player uh, when you're building a roster, both on and off the field? Okay. Yeah, you look for diversity in your roster. So you look for power, and you look for speed, mm-hmm. you look for defense, pitching, 
And so what you try to do, I think the great coaches or the good coaches are able to identify what they have and what they need. And so this was unique in the sense that, you know, we were, we were actually only returning three players, right? So we returned Logan Hallman, Reagan Jennings, and Demi uh, Elder. So we, we got three players that hit for average. They got speed. They can all play pretty good outfield defense. And Reagan can go outfield or infield. Um, and so, I, I you know, you start there and you say, what do we need? Well, we need, we need power for sure, you know. And so that's where you got – then you go and you get Katie Lott to come in. You get Alana Johnson. Uh, I think Katie Lott, when I watched her play out of high school, I was convinced that she would turn into this – not just a home run hitter that could hit double-digit home runs, but – while she was doing it, she had bat with a 300 average because she wasn't a high strikeout kid. So, we, you know, you start looking. So then we get Alana and we get uh, Shel, um, Katie Lott. So we've added some power, right? And we get Maya Davis. So we've got speed. Like Maya's got elite athleticism, yeah, elite nice. speed, and absolutely phenomenal. People don't realize how good an outstanding uh, defensive center fielder she is. She had 11 assists from the outfield as a freshman and I think come back this year where nobody ran on her, she still ended up with five assists, which is a good year for most, most outfielders, but with her, they're like everybody's stopping the runners. Um, and then she hit for average. So we were able to add that piece Of course, you got to have catching. So we get Vic Valdez in and then we, we know we've got uh, the seven freshmen coming in. So you got to put their into the equation. We know we got Haley Tony, which is I think the top shortstop, in the state of Texas coming in this year. Like, she's an elite athlete. And she's a, a, a versatile athlete. She can bunt. She can slap. She can hit home runs. She hit six home runs at PGF Nationals last week. Um, and she can defend. So, you know, we – okay, we got – we need – we got Reagan Jennings on the infield. We got um, – we've got Haley, Tony. Probably need a little bit more on the middle infield. Alana Johnson could play second base or right field. So that that was good, but we still have, we need more. So then we were able to pick up uh, Langenfeld, uh, Langlears, Alexa Langlears, uh, and then we were able to add, and we and we were able to add Chloe Riasetto. So we we've got three freshman pitchers, and we've got Alexa, um, Chloe Riasetto, one veteran pitcher on the roster, but we think we've got a shot at Kennedy. And then when we get Kennedy, okay, now we're right where we want to be. We got two veterans and three really talented freshman, uh, two lefties and a righty. You've got Bailey Lindemuth, who, you know, I put her, I can play her at third, I can play her at second, I can pitch her, or I can put her in the outfield with her speed. She's a really elite athlete as well, and one of the best uh, right-handed hitters in the state of Texas, an extremely talented hitter. And then you've got uh, Cassie Johnson, a classic can catch. So I thought, you know, you're kind of looking at each step. Once Kennedy come, I thought our biggest need was that third catcher. We needed three catchers because if mm -hmm. Vic goes down, then we only got one freshman catcher. So we, we're we working on that um, now. I think you will, there'll be an announcement real soon, but we're in the process of trying to add that third catcher. Um, and then um, we got all through the thing. We ended up uh, with a lot of speed and, and a lot of power. So when people ask what I look for, I look for, I want to get a blend of athletes that, that blend together and make a really good team. And that sounds, you know, simple, but that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what you try to do. Yeah. So we, we think Valdez is a very, very good defensive catcher. And I want to be um, – one of the things that I didn't get – I didn't – I was I was known as an offensive coach. You know, we, mm. he wants hitting. Glasgow gets hitters. And, and my teams have been built both in travel ball and um, college with – pretty good offensive team, but I understand the importance of defense. And mm -hmm. I didn't address it probably as quick as I should have at Louisiana. We put a major, major emphasis on our defense in the last, you know, year and a half, two years. Um, and this team, I, I've tried to really, as I built the team this summer, I've really tried to build with defense in mind. And so I think we've got an outstanding defensive catcher. We've got an outstanding infield now all the way around. Lauren Allred, we've not talked about another one of the power hitters. And because yeah. Alana and Katie Lott were right-handed power hitters, it mm, really yeah. fit really well with Lauren Allred, a left-handed power hitter. And cool. she was injured last year and just wasn't able – she had uh, torn an oblique muscle in her stomach. And, and in her God, pool, she's swinging. 
was in great pain. Uh, and so she was just couldn't swing the bat. So we shut her down real quick in the early season um, and let her let her rehab herself yeah. back. And she's back full speed now. If we can get her to regain her freshman form, she's one of the best left-handed hitters in the country. If she can regain that form of her freshman year, and I have no doubt she will because she's a hard worker. So <laughs> when you go through the, what I look for in a roster, I'm looking for someone that can play defense on the middle infield. I think that's critical. We want speed all over the outfield. That's critical. And then you get to the offensive, and you want catching, obviously. And then on the offensive side, it's, it's just really important that we have – people that can steal bases, people that can score from second mm -hmm. on a single, and then we want people that can hit doubles for, and get runners home from first base. And then at the end of the day, we'd like to be in that 75 to 100 home run mix. Uh, that would be our goal, to get in that – to end up in that 75 to, 100 home, 75 to 100 home runs in a season, especially here on this park where you hear the, the stories about the wind – and how on certain days the ball just flies out and it's yes. kind of known as a hitter's park. Mm. So um, we, we look for everything. And, and then the other, the one common denominator that I want in every player, I want intelligence. Like I like really smart players that have uh, a great IQ on the field. Mm -hmm. I want IQ players. And then I want kids that go to class and make uh, great grades because it eliminates a lot of worries at Christmas vacation time. Uh, mm. When I'm running, I don't want to be worrying about if my shortstop's going to be eligible or if my pitcher's going to be uh, academically eligible. Good I point. want to know that my kids have went to class every single day in the fall, that they go to the mentoring appointments, they go to their tutoring appointments. And then if they do all those things and they have intelligence, uh, they're going to make great grades. And then we know they're eligible in January. So <laughs> it's a, the, that's a, a common denominator across the whole roster is you want extremely intelligent players. Um, and then on the roster, we want diversity. We want speed players. We want power players. And we want infield defense and outfield defense along with catching and pitching. So yeah, uh, in it's, some ways, you want uh, unique qualities among your 22 players or 20 players. And then others, you want that common denominator of really intelligent, high character. We haven't talked about character. That's <laughs> universal. Yeah. You always want high character. Um so those are the intangibles that will end up making a winning ball club. Yeah, it, it's so clear. And we, we've we talked about it on this show. Every move that you've made, it's we'll come and talk about the player you're bringing in. And it's high talent. And it seems like you're going after the best. <laughs> and we're getting some of the best. And it's really exciting to think about this upcoming season. And you talked about, yeah, well, the different aspects that are important to you about this team competitively. How, how would you describe the personality of the team so far that you, how, how much you've interacted and what kind of are you expecting from, yeah, how they're going to interact with each other as a team? Yeah. Uh, excitement. I mean, I think the, if you had to describe our team right now, the roster is excited. Like they're, um, I don't even know how to describe the level of excitement they have. Uh, obviously, when Nija joined our program, that created an excitement among the other players that, um, cool. you know, Chloe Riosetto is a winner. Like I coached her two years at Louisiana. She's mm -hmm. one of the more talented left-handed pitchers in the country. And this year she just bloomed into this complete competitor, um, was able to get you know, she got wins over Oklahoma. Everybody talks about that, but she also got a win over yeah. LSU. It was an outstanding team, top 10 team. I think she had two wins over Baylor. She had a shutout win over Texas State. It was like number 17 RPI, a very hard team to shut out. Mm -hmm. She just bloomed in this ultimate competitor. And, you know, she's set up to be like the star pitcher here, right? But right. she's not happy with that. She wants Nyjah Kennedy on her team. Like she wanted to play with Nyjah. Oh yeah, she like that to me and calling me like, Coach, you're gonna get her. Or you better get <laughs> Nigel. Coach, I mean it. You better get Naja here. I'm not kidding. Uh, Don't maybe call again. <laughs> yeah, and like, so he was okay. Like, but he was more excited about adding Naja than Chloe, which says a lot about your ball club and a lot about Chloe Rio. The character. Mm -hmm. They want to win. Like they're hungry yeah. to win. They're Yo. Not, um. So it's not about uh, stats. It's only that's only stat that matters is that that W column. Mm -hmm. so right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and Nigel wants to hit. Like Nigel, her big thing is hitting. <laughs> she can't. So, yeah. 
<laughs> it's like the ultimate challenge for me as a hitting coach. Like, uh, <laughs> and last, you could have created. Oh my gosh! Last year, for the first time in Louisiana, I turned the hitting over to another coach, and it was the first time I did that in my coaching career, and I just felt empty all year. Like, I, I, I want to get back. <laughs> oh, that's so, so I, sad. I, I a refreshing break for a year. Yeah. Um, you know, we battled pretty hard. We got our home runs up to 78 and then 82. It had kind of been a journey to get up to that level that we were at. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I missed it this year. I want to get back on the field. Um, we we went backwards to 60 last year with some personnel and, some, and a little bit of the defensive shift. We went to defense, and that had a little bit to do with it. But I want to get – like, I'm dying to get back out there and try to get the girls mashing. And Let's I go. Just, Nash is like the ultimate, like well, how lucky is it for a coach every day to get a walk on the field? And so I've already got it planned in my head. Like I'm going to have Nyjah, Katie Lott, <laughs> and one of the freshman uh, power hitters in that group. And those three kids, if I can get those kids really confident, really seeing the ball. And you know, I think Nyjah, like I just texted her. Um, I don't even know what she answered. I've got to look. But I said, let's either go for your age in home runs or your number. <laughs> one of those is your uniform go. Because we talked about 15. I go, 15 not high enough. Let's go for 24? your age or your number 24. And then <laughs> yeah. if we go short of that, we end up at 15. We're going to celebrate. But those cool. are the things like there are just so many ways that we're excited as coaches and as players about the future of our program and of, of this particular team yeah. in 2024. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you um, you brought up Nyjah, and I just one of the things I liked about your um, press conference you did with all the media. I guess it was last week. It all runs together. Is you talked about how excited the players were, and you talked just now a bit about that with Chloe, and and you brought up that uh, Demi Elder, our we're big we're big Demi fans, that she was trying to play tour guide <laughs> with her, and and just talk about like how how excited the, t the 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 team was when they got her to campus and they're like okay help us how how can we close the deal coach like they they <laughs> seem like you just said they all wanted her here so bad cuz there's a lot of talk out there of like will there be jealousy and all that and I'm like nothing I've heard from this group is jealous they want to win and they understand who she was and mm. they were they were selling just as hard to get her here as you were it sounded like yeah like we had we had players like drove 7 8 hours to be Yo. here and say welcome you know like that's oh, real. like who does that? That's and, uh, you know, you talk about getting in your car and driving eight hours so you can, you know, welcome someone and tell them that you want to play with them, that you mm -hmm. hope they come in. That was, that was really a big help. But Demi Elder, I, I, she's a doll. Like, first of all, she's just a cute person, like, she's, yeah. and fiery. And you know, I don't even know her. And I walk in the, uh, the team room. Mm -hmm. And she's making fun of me, you know, like, I was tired <laughs> one day. I walked in and said, oh, she just got bad. You know, I've been there since 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 10.30, and I'm tired. And uh, <laughs> and I just give it right back to her, and she can take it. So I, I just really uh, – Oh, my gosh. She's great. Are, uh, absolutely adorable. And you could see she's a, a fierce competitor. And I can remember watching Demi in camps at Texas A&M when she was, like, 7th and 8th grade. Mm, uh, yeah. And, you know, she runs the bases well. She plays defense well. She can hit well. And so hopefully, you know, that we'll be able to take her and this program can – take her and she'll obviously be a part of it and, and hopefully a big part of it and we can go to heights together that we never dreamed of right and so that's yeah. part of the, the journey that's it's going to be really fun you know like if we get to the world series that'll be that'll be our destination or if we win the world series that would be our destination if we get upset in, in the super regional that would be our destination mm -hmm. and i always tell the kids like the destination is not the important part the important part is the journey and mm -hmm. when you actually go and you get there. And so we're on this journey right now. <laughs> it's just super exciting and super fun. And and Demi and, and Logan, Lo, uh, you know, there are, Logan came over and a little speedster. And and Reagan. Uh Reagan mm -hmm. very quiet. Like she's a little bit like she's probably a little sneaky. Or okay. the Demi, but yeah. like the sweet, innocent, uh yeah. very quiet. Um until it's game time. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's I, she she's plays. a killer. Then she's <laughs> Yeah. Lights out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and they're all competitors. So that's the thing I like about our roster. Like it's mm. it's not there's no weak the, spots on this roster. This is a very, very talented roster that we have. And I don't think the average fan in college softball, like, you know, they know Maya Davis was good. They know Maya Davis hit four seventeen. They don't realize Maya Davis did that against the number four schedule in the country. Mm -hmm. you know, Tell them. Not a conference schedule. 
But and I, I read the comments, you know, like I love message boards. They motivate. Oh my goodness! Get off of there, Jerry. I forgot it. Everybody says don't read them. No, I read them. Don't read them. Like, I'm gonna oh, show you. <laughs> just start never... calling me every time you start reading them. Just give me a call and we'll talk about it. <laughs> they don't bother me. Like I don't get mad. I just like. I don't oh know. okay. Yeah. Just laugh at it. Like when I first took the, when I first was. Talking oh my about goodness! It, yeah, what's it like reading those comments? Everybody told me like, you know. Uh, you can't recruit to, to, to Lubbock, Texas. Nobody oh, and you said. Now, okay, let's see. And, uh, you know, I just told my staff, we've had 12 kids on campus, 11 have committed. And hey. so, and that, that's a kind of a hint, right? Because we've only announced nine. So, that's two more. Uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> Heard it here first. There's a procedure you got to go through, but I'm just telling you, we've had 12 kids on campus, 11 have committed, um, and nobody thought we could do that. But that's something like a, mo a message board. Give me a warning, like be prepared when you bring them to campus, have your visits ready. And, uh, you know, the, I, re I remember reading, why would anybody leave Louisiana to go mm -hmm. to a softball program like Texas Tech? Jerry must have been about to get fired. He was about to get fired or he wouldn't have did that. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll, we'll find you out. Have they no say idea. the wildest so, things. So. Like, that's a motivator to me, like. Okay, you you got your feet in the water. Let's 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 jump in all the way and let's 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 get yourself in a, a better position. Yeah. And I don't think anybody in the softball world right now that understands softball that now it kind of makes sense why, you know, the things that were appealing to me with mm -hmm. the NIL and you know the change of scenery, the enthusiasm, like just to do yeah. the same. You do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and um, over. You know, it was a lot of things that the fan doesn't realize. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I've never said to anybody, this would be the first time I've said it out loud, but every morning I had to drive right by the spot where my daughter had to wreck that was killed. Mm -hmm. And every night on the way home from the ball practice, I had to drive by that spot. And that was hard. Like, that was a really hard part of every day. Yeah. And and so I don't have to do that now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's personal things that nobody needs to ever hear you say or you don't need to. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. Don't feel sorry for me. No, uh, it's I'm not about that. Yeah. I'm kind of world to be here. But those are things that, like, when fans get mad at Louisiana, they don't think about that. When fans, mm -hmm. that, you know, they're out in Oklahoma and they're making fun of it, why would the idiot leave a proven program like Louisiana and go somewhere like that? Yeah. Um, they just don't understand. And so, uh, you know, I love the message board because they do, they point out things. And you need to know if you're a coach, I want to know what the Texas Tech fan base is thinking. I want to know what mm. they're thinking. Uh, it's important. It's our audience, right? Um, they are the people that boost our program. They're the people that support us. I need to know and I need to be in touch with them. And so you got to use that stuff also in a productive way. And you got to filter yeah. it in ways that and digest it in ways that it makes you better, but not bitter. And so that's. Mm -hmm. Get better, yeah. Better. And I, I want to go back a couple steps and say, like, I appreciate you sharing that, Jerry. And I think that's such a, a huge um thing to to share with us and i admire that thank you and speaking of like your daughters you have one along with you on staff so it kind of feels like this moment is really special and this move and being at tech there's so many different components of it being special the roster can you tell us a little bit about what it means to you of having your daughter with you coaching and the coaching staff and what they're excited for with this team yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I have your family, you know, and uh, I have three daughters. Uh, Tara, mm -hmm. the oldest, you know, she was the first one that played travel ball. And then when she got done with college, she started helping me with the Southern Force. So we actually coached the Southern Force together. Cool. Um, and she took it up. We started out on the 18 team together, and I wanted to give her more independence and more um, ability to grow as a coach. So we started a 16 under program. And she ran the 16s. I ran the 18s. And then when I went to Georgia, I turned the whole organization over to her. And when she came to Georgia as the pitching coach in 2012, uh, she turned the Southern Force organization over to Elisa Goler, who was a star player for the Southern Force. It was in the Southern Force program four years and then went with to Georgia. And I was able to coach her three years at Georgia. And she was a seven-time All-American, hit 24 home runs. Her sophomore year, great player. So it's all family. And Lisa's kind of like, I think of all those players kind of like, they're all like my daughters, right? When they, you yeah. know, when the ones that, you know, you coach and they have great success. And when they leave the, 
you leave or they leave and you're just family. It's how you feel about them. They feel like your own daughters. Um, yeah. So to be able to, you know, I, people don't realize that I, a lot of people don't even realize I coached with Tara three years with Lou at Georgia where Lou was the head coach. Tara was the pitching coach and I was the hitting coach. And if cool. you know Lou, like she's everything. Like Lou was, you don't just, you know, if you're the hitting coach, when Lou walks on the field, yeah. the assistant hitting coach. She's the hitting coach. Yeah. <laughs> and she. Know also, your role. She's also brilliant. She's uh, always prepared. She's, I could go on for days about, you know, Lou Harris Champer because she's a unique individual, but a, a great coach to learn under. Also extremely hard to work for, you know, like mm. she's mm -hmm. uh she works for you harder than, you know, like she'd tell her players, like I'll work for you harder than you work for me, but I expect you to work hard and I will work mm. harder for you. And she did that easily because of her work habit was so great. So uh, as a hitting coach, I was able to learn under Lou mm. and all the results of Georgia hitting wasn't, it was more about Lou than Jerry Glasgow. And likewise with pitching, Tara was able to work under her for three years. Well, if you know how important pitching is in softball, you know, when Lou brought her in and, well, Lou was right beside her every day. So I think that was a great experience for Tara and set her up for her to be successful in her career. But it led to, you know, us to be able to come back here. Now, I know I can work with her. I know mm -hmm. I can. I, I know I'm lucky to have her as uh, as the person calling pitches or as the person preparing scouting reports because of that three year period at Georgia in the SEC. Um, you know, the just there was a lot of great things there. And then, you know, I had three daughters. And, of course, we talked about we lost Jerry Ann, our, our youngest, our baby. But my middle daughter, Erin, was a catcher at Texas A&M when they won the World Series or got runner-up in the World Series in 2008. And they had Big 12 championships uh, in 2008. And cool. so very proud of Erin. She also was a catcher on my uh, ASA Gold National Team in 2004 that won the national championship. Hey, yo. And we won the Canada Cup in 03. So it kind of – you know, like Aaron had a lot to do with my career in the sense that, you know, she was a key player on my first travel ball team that got success. And then, of course, um, you know, by, when she went to A&M and they went to the World Series, Lou, I had already accepted a job in March to start at Georgia in the fall of 2008. And Texas A&M and Aaron went to the World Series uh, in 2008. And then mm -hmm. I think it was March. Maybe it may have been April, but probably March, I think. Lou said, hey, I'm going to buy tickets if Aaron goes to the World Series. If Aaron and a &M, they had Scarborough and Gibson, so they had a really good team. And then Scarborough got hurt, and then Megan Gibson turned into, you know, Superman wow. and took a &M to the World Series. Say but this. Lou had made the statement, like, um, if they go, I'm going to buy a ticket, and we're going to watch it together, and we'll plan how we can take Georgia to the World Series. So, <laughs> Cool. This is something nobody, I don't think I've ever talked about this on a podcast, but Lou and I were sitting on the front row, the very front row behind home plate, like 20 feet oh. from home plate. And How we cool. watched A&M play uh, all during that World Series. And um, cool. we were, we our conversation was like, well, how we get our team to that next year? What do we got to do at Georgia to get to that? And, mm -hmm. and then we did it. You know, we accomplished it. Um, just moments like that with your daughters that you share – I can remember, like, the, maybe it had been the first game, I imagine, but we're so close to home plate. Like, we're in a yeah. row. And, you know, so all there is is a net between me and Aaron. And I oh, no. And said, Aaron. Oh, and, no. And I hollered at her like a dad, and she turned around and went, Yeah, dad. So, uh, Read the room. A, yeah. But those are moments, like, my, my daughters and my family's everything. Yeah. Uh, and having Tara here is huge. And, you know, don't think I wouldn't love to have Aaron. Aaron and her husband had just moved out of West Texas. Um, <sighs> and out of, uh, You're it. And his job, with his job, like um, two months ago. So it's ironic that as soon as she moved out, we move in. and we're gonna, But she'll be around the ballpark and at games. And cool. you know, she uh, had recruited some, uh, had uh, uh, coached some of the young travel ball kids that are now stars out in DFW that we're recruiting really hard here. Um, so she'll play a part in everything. Like she texts me all the time to box scores and dad, you'd be the one kid. This kid's really blowing up and dad, this kid hit two home runs today. Be sure you text her. So it's uh, a family thing with us. And, uh, we're just lucky yeah. to have all the girls, um, involved in the program, Aaron and Tara. And of course, you know, we, we miss Jerry Ann. It's a, it's yeah. a everyday battle to, um, you know, to just stay strong and keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah.
I y'all are so. carrying on her legacy for sure though in the way that y'all are going about it and so yeah i've only heard great things about tara because i had i had heard that maybe we were looking at her like you mentioned earlier that's something we have never talked about on the show because that was not public knowledge but you brought it up yourself and so i remember like she's a heck of a coach and now we get yeah. her as an assistant coach as a pitching coach so that's really yeah. exciting one of the things we loved from your first press conference day is someone asked you about the roster and you're very honest and you're like, my baseline mm. is like, yeah, we want to get to a regional next year, but my goal is always to get to Oklahoma City. My goal is always to have a World Series roster. Um, and you kind of, a lot of people kind of laughed at that <laughs> when that clip got posted around like, okay, yeah, like Texas Tech's going to be in the World Series next year, LOL. But what do you say to people now? Like, do you feel like, hey, I mean, we just got Nadja Kennedy Maya Davis, Lauren Allred, all these people that you talked about, plus these returners and these freshmen. Do you feel like you, we, you have a team that can truly compete in year one and, and people told you absolutely can't recruit to Lubbock, you're not going to do that, and then kind of this is where you are. Do you feel like you're like, well, we did it. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's, it's okay to have goals, right? So you always yes. have goals. And my goal every year is to go to the World Series, and we never As did it. should it. be. <laughs> seven years at Louisiana, we never did it. And I'm not proud of that. I'm uh, I'm disappointed I have to say that. But, you know, when we went to, I got to Georgia, we went to World Series the first two years. We got in the Final Four. And then we – I thought it was easy. Like, I thought every year we went to the World Series. It just seemed so easy to do it. It, it seemed – it really did. I, it like I hope it's so, yeah. And, and then, you know, we go to – the next four years, we get to the Super Regional – we go three games with Baylor and we lose, and we go three games with Tennessee and we lose two to one. You're that close. Like the next four, mm-hmm. the next four seasons, you're within one game twice, two more times of being in the World Series. Mm-hmm. And then I went to AM and uh, you know, we, we weren't very good in my first year, 2015. That was, we only scored uh, 280 runs. And then we went up to 370 the next year. And in that one year period, we, we were among the top hitting teams and probably the top power hitting team, run team in the SEC. Um, and then we went to World Series in 17. So, okay, I've been at two schools. We've been to World Series twice. When I took the job at Louisiana, I totally thought we would go to the World Series within a couple of years. I knew we were – the program, we'd lost 13 players in a coaching change. We had – we'd lost our first-team All-American shortstop. We'd lost our first-team All-American center fielder. We'd lost the conference pitcher of the year. Uh, the pitcher went to Arizona. The center fielder went to Arizona. DJ Sanders, a great shortstop, first team All American, went to Oregon. So, and I took that team over at Thanksgiving. Uh, literally talked the team for maybe five ta- five days that they were around the field. And then we Christmas break, come back in January, and I'm like looking at roster, and made them wear the uniforms. So I knew who they were. I didn't. Think <laughs> we were going to the World Series that year, but I thought we were going to go to the regional, and we did. In fact, we made the regional final. We we beat LSU in the regional championship to force the if game with that roster. Mm. And we worked our butts off to get there and and do that. And then from that point on, I thought we would go to to the World Series. We ended up getting to the Super Regional at Louisiana, but we never got that. We just didn't. 2020, we had the, I thought was our best team in my seven years at Louisiana. We had Megan Kleist, Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year. So this isn't the first time I've recruited a Pac-12 pitcher here. We recruited a Pac-12 pitcher. <laughs> hey. It's what you do, Jerry. It's what you do. It's just uh, what you do. And uh, we we had the number one RPI. When COVID shut down the 2020 season, you mm. look back, we were number one RPI. We, yeah. Florida was ranked number three or number five, and we beat them two out of three at Florida. Florida and Texas, one was three and one was five. I don't remember. We played Texas in Austin and won by one, lost by one. We beat mm. We beat Florida two out of three. We uh, split with Oklahoma State. They were ranked number nine. We split yeah. with LSU. They were ranked number seven. And and both those, LSU and Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State, we won by one, lose by one. And then we swept Ole Miss that year. So we were seven and four against those teams in a in that 18 and six season. Um, and we had the number one RPI. And I've always thought we would have went to World Series. That, that was the team that would have went to the World Series. That didn't change my mindset. My mindset is we're going to the I'm World saying, Series. I'm saying, yeah. And, uh, I've, uh, I've always joked with Shelby that, like, my toxic trait is we're, gonna, we're going to the World Series. We're going to win the World Series. Every that year. Is, that's just yeah. who, who I am and how we roll um, yeah, If you don't think you're going to do something, you have no chance almost of doing it. You know? And if you do do it, what is it? It's an accident. And so if we go to the World Series, I don't want to say, well, it's an accident for Jerry Glasgow. 
Oh, well, yeah. and, oh, that's a good and now point. that we got, you know, now that we've got Nigel Kennedy, I think you'd be absolutely, um, you just, I don't want to say the word stupid. You'd not be absolutely naive to set to go lower than winning yeah. the World Series. It'd be but, almost insulting to her talent as well as the rest of the players on the roster if you didn't right. consider it mm. as, as a, mm. a contender to make it there at this point. The, so the, the critical point, though, when you set that goal is, and you and your players both have to realize, like, don't talk about something without understanding how hard you got to work to do it. And the greater the goal, the greater the effort's got to be to get you there. So this, you know, that destination of World Series participant or World Series champion, don't talk about that destination. Talk about the journey. And the journey has got to be about extremely hard work, extremely commitment. You know, I don't need my athletes out setting the town of Lubbock on fire on the weekends and being the best partying team in the, on the campus. You know, we got to be disciplined. We want to be uh, focused athletes and have a, mm-hmm. a high goal. And uh, yeah. we want to live our lives like that over this next 10 month period. And that, that, that part of the journey and what we're going to do to get there is way, way, way like that's, that's 99.9% of the battle. The that's actual true. Setting the goal is like a 10th of 1%. That so, is so true. When you make that statement, like we want to be a World Series team every year or we want to go to the World Series, our goal is going to be the World Series every year. That's not who I am. That's not what we talk about. What we're going to talk about is how hard we're going to work. We're going to be the hardest working team in the Big 12. We're going to be the hardest working team in America. We're going to be the most committed team in the country and then live up to that. And then, and then you have to, you give yourself a chance to accomplish your goals. I love right. that. I love that. The, a part up. of that hard work is coming up. Just these a couple of quick questions that you may or may not be able to answer but people have been asking us so we figured if you're allowed to answer them go for it if not just say you can't quick but questions quick questions i'll try Jerry. um but uh fall ball do you do you have any idea what that's going to look like yet or, hmm. or have y'all gotten into those discussions yet yeah uh, you know we 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 don't we we have just had discussions we kind of know what it's going to look like it's not been a priority the priority has been for getting sure. our roster uh, mm-hmm. finished and uh, I think as of today, the roster's finished. Uh, uh, well, I think we've completed that task. Uh, mm-hmm. Not to say that a piece might not show up here or there and we might change that, but I can, when I go to bed tonight, I'm thinking that my, my summer recruiting period is over. That's exciting. And we'll, we'll turn to fall ball. We'll become a cool. practice schedule. We'll become front and center of what's important to do in the next few days, apart from moving my uh, resident from <laughs> – Yeah. <laughs> Actually, oh, yeah. finding a home. Yeah, what a house! I sold it. Oh, good. And, uh, you... <laughs> we now that I've got the recruiting done, I'm gonna I'm gonna fly out cool. in the morning and start moving pieces of furniture and stuff from um, Lafayette. Hey, that's so, right. Um, steps. Let's get it to love it. Going on, but the fall schedule. I like to practice late. This is the. Uh, I like to do the individual um, practice sessions early in the fall. Some mm-hmm. coaches jump in and put the team together quick. I like to get to know the athletes one-on-one and in small groups. So we'll do uh, small groups till sometime between October 1st and October the 10th. At that point, we'll go into our team session, 45-day window, where we can practice uh, 20 hours per athlete per week. Up until then, they'll just be eight hours. Um, and so, and then those games have to occur during that 45-day window. So sometime between October the 10th and – uh, Thanksgiving, we'll we'll really lock in and we'll play. I don't know whether we'll play four games, six games, eight games with other teams, but we'll. Uh, I know we're going to play. Um, I do know this: we're going to play um, cool. practice games with Odessa on cool. the seventeenth and eighteenth. If, if I got the dates right, if I'm doing this by head, uh, <laughs> you it's were Saturday really Saturday. good at that. Uh, yeah, the Saturday games at two o'clock, the Sunday games at noon. So wow. there you go. there's something that nobody will hear hey. anywhere else before they there see it go. on here. Uh, that's inside Seems- too. Uh, yeah, I know uh, fans have been asking us, and I'm like, I don't know, but you're going to be able to see that. That's how excited they are about the team. Is they're like, we're going to go to fall ball this year. Like, when are they playing? I'm like, ah, oh, well, they'll let you know when they know. Um, we'll add, that's that's going to be we're, that'll be early in the fall. Like we've been not even practicing but two or three days. But I like to get the kids all out there, let them all see what they've got, um, sure. and yeah. uh, then we'll come back. And we'll practice for four to five weeks, and then we'll try to get somebody to play a, a game at the very cool. end of fall. 
But in the middle, like the best games were when we play each other. Like, yeah, inter squad. And when we, uh, when can't we wait. inter squad, those are the games that I watch and really read into. I love to see the battles uh, of teammates against each other in inter squad and how they approach those games and who, you know, how they handle the adversity of bad scrimmages and how they handle um, the different challenges they see when they, they play against other elite teams. So that'll be late in the fall when we really, you know, when they when people would come up and sit in the stands and mm-hmm. watch uh, practice. Now, I always kept my practices open uh, at cool. Louisiana. I want to build the fan base here. One of the ways you build a fan base is you interact with them and you are transparent. And so, like, coming on this podcast is so people can know more about our program. And mm-hmm. I, I want – I want them to know, like, if we're practicing in that October 10th through the Thanksgiving, I don't, I want to look up in the stands. I had probably, there was all inner squads that we had five, 600 people at Louisiana. We had people every day watching practice. And I hope that, you know, there's somebody every day in Lovey saying, I want to go out and watch Naja Kennedy pitch today. Hey, they're gonna. Oh, they're already asking. They're yeah. gonna. It's happening. Because yeah, I, mean, I want to see them out there and I want to know they're welcome. Um, yeah. You know, and we'll, we'll we'll do a lot of batting practice on the field. Uh, fans will love watching the girls hit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it'll be fun. And the fall yeah. period is a really critical time to build cool. our uh, – and I think this team, I was telling my daughter, Tara, that, you know, this is going to be like fall team bonding because if ever totally. there was a fall when we needed to get the kids to know each other and really – A lot of new, not a, a lot of new pieces. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a huge fall for us. Cool. Well, we're, we're, I oh mean, we could talk to you forever, clearly, but we're probably getting close here. But, but one thing I know we want, we talked about season tickets earlier. I know that they can put a deposit down right now. Eventually, I've heard some murmurs about a, a maybe a potentially fun non con schedule coming. I don't know how much you probably can't speak about that. But what do you want to tell fans as far as like, hey, go get those season tickets. It's going to be worth it. You're going to want to have them. This is what we're going to build here. We're going to build a rabid fan base. Mm-hmm. And, and Texas Tech fans, you probably learned it already, but you're going to learn it. Like, <laughs> yeah, take, they're, a they're a rowdy group. They're a rowdy group. I know you're used to that. Uh, so if we get them out to the ballpark, they're going to have a fun time. But I'm going to let you pitch that to them as the head man in charge now. Yeah, I, 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 we're going to be exciting to watch. And uh, fans are going to want to be a part of this. Uh, they deserve to be a part of it. They waited a long time to have a really good team here. And they had everything prepared. Like when I walked in, we had – everything was set up. Everything was ready. The field's beautiful. Mm, um, yeah. The, the, you know, all the seats are chair back. Like how many parts you go where everything's chair back? It's you so know, nice. Great farm areas. And it's just a really nice uh, – place for me to recruit to and Mm -hmm. uh, then you come in the indoor we got beautiful cages we got a building outside with open air hitting Mm -hmm. Uh, everything's great now what we've added maya davis is excitement like uh, on my shelf right here i've got the golden shoe award where as a freshman she led the nation in stolen bases that's so sick you couldn't let the nation last year i shut her down you know it's like (laughs) yeah she only only stole shut it down (laughs) I just made up my mind, like, I can't afford to try to steal 50 or 60 bases and take a chance on this kid tearing an ACL. <laughs> so we only stole, sure. last year we only stole bases when we were in need. In, Needed in it. Mm-hmm. And, but that, this is an electric player. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Jada Coleman, if anybody watched Oklahoma, you had to fall in love with yeah. watching Jada Coleman play defense in the outfield and Jada mm-hmm. Coleman bat. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to make the prediction that Maya Davis will be the best center fielder in college softball. <laughs> uh, and I believe that with all my heart. And I also think she'll be the, one of the best leadoff hitters, if not the best leadoff hitter in the country. So when you start talking about why you want to come, you obviously are Nigel, uh, Chloe mm. Riosetto. So well, many more. Maya sure, Davis sure. the real deal. And, and then you go Alana Johnson, you know, 14 home runs, and she's fast. And then Haley Tony is going to be as – uh, a really fun player to watch her entire career. Lauren Allred's a, a clutch a hitter. She had 50, 50, 47 RBIs in her first 92 college at bats. Like, that's an unbelievable statistic. A bit absurd, it, truly. It, yeah, you know, you get, who does that? And so yeah. it's, it's going to be a really, really um, talented team. Vic Valdez plays with fire. Oh, uh, I can't wait. Just like the fan base will embrace her and love her. Mm, she, yeah. uh, she is a very animated, 
catcher oh. and with, with Nigel throwing. There's going to be a lot. Oh, they're going to. Oh, their Jerry, strikeout you're so cele- right. Their strikeout celebration oh together God. is going to break the internet. I already know. Oh my, you are so play right. With, uh, I want my players to play with fire. When they make oh my. a diving catch in the outfield, they slide Passion. into the wall. My team better be out there helping them get up off the ground. The whole the whole defense, and uh, they're gonna. I'm gonna let them show a little bit of emotion, but at the right time. You know, okay. we're not gonna celebrate a That's walk fair. when somebody walks us. But if we get a hit, <laughs> if we get a home run, or we make a great defensive play, I want my team to have phenomenal fire. Um, Let's go. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun team to watch for the fans, oh. and I, and they're gonna win. So yeah, um, come out Most and uh, help us. The fan helps us win too. Uh, the, I was about to uh, say the, uh, the crowd experience is extremely uh, critical for a, a player. Mm-hmm. To, you know, if you told a college kid come here and play, we're going to have a great college experience, but we only got 150 fans a game. You couldn't do that. It's contradictory. Yeah. So part of us, we're going to have an electric team for your fan base or for our fan base, and we're going to play the game with emotion, with excitement, and then the fan base by being simply the fan base in the stands and being loud. And I hope they are rowdy. Yeah. Uh, I want, I want, don't I want worry rowdy. about that. <laughs> well, I want rowdy. Yeah. Uh, that, Texas that's Tech fans. Experience yeah. for our players, which when you add for the experience for our players, it helps me as a recruiter. So it all goes totally. together. And then we want to be there for our fans. So I hope it's cool. a, I hope it's just a, a tremendously uh, exciting time for the fans because it is for us. And we're looking forward to doing our thing together with the fans. Oh gosh, we can feel it. I mean, it it started with your hire, Jerry. The it, the the excitement is undeniable. So really exciting to hear the players a part of that too. And y'all heard them. Every list, every item that he talked about is I'm go excited. watch this team. Is it February? I'm, I'm losing my mind already just thinking about it. Um. So Jerry, thank you so much for your transparency and, and coming and talking to us and uh, getting us, yeah, a new level of excitement and hope of what, type of atmosphere and culture you can bring to this program um yeah i can't wait to talk to you again later on so just pencil us in pencil we'll be in touch when people start i didn't even know who you know i, I didn't know what steen's card it was and my life was overwhelmed for a week but i yeah. started like people saying hey this podcast is really nice and eric lopez is saying good things about you and i didn't even have time to watch it and i was so busy and so like a week later, I thought, I'm going to watch that. And uh, <laughs> it was really good. And I was impressed cool. with your enthusiasm. And then uh, when I finally got around talking to Tara about it, it was like three weeks after we'd been here. And I said, Tara, if we haven't talked about the scene. Oh, she said, Dad, those girls are so enthusiastic. It's contagious. Like, it makes you feel really good. So I want to say thank you to you guys because, you know, as we try to develop this um, experience with our fan base, and we want it to be a team effort. And y'all, y'all are am, am, uh, providing a very critical media in a very enthusiastic way. I love the way, you know, your your podcast is contagious. It's addictive the way you are so enthusiastic about our sport of softball and all the sports at Texas Tech. So I thank you for what you're doing for the university and thank you for the opportunity for us as a coaching staff to come out and, and like tune into the fan base and give the fan base information at this time of year, what we're doing. And it's critical. And uh, y'all doing a great job. So thank you for that. As 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 uh, we in, we're on this journey together. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's that's the nicest thing anyone can ever say is that we're passionate and that we enthusiastic. That's all we're trying to do, is get mm-hmm. more people to watch and and so we always appreciate when y'all do that. So yeah, hopefully we'll have you on again sometime. But we'll be talking about you. Don't worry. All season long, <laughs> we'll be hyping y'all up. You're. You feel memeable, yeah. so I imagine your internet presence is going to take off. You like this you like reading the message boards. You're going to like watching <laughs> Sing Scarlet after oh, every game. Like, and the gift, you know, I, I say that stuff. I believe me, but I, you know, like even on my Facebook, like come on, I'll just say something back really nice. You know, if I'm going to respond. I'm yeah. going to respond really nice, and um, you know, cool, just, great. Why not? So yeah, well, awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. we'll we'll close yeah. it out again. So we'll do we do Reckham. To close out every episode, That's so we'll, we'll finish it out with a, a solid Reckham, Reckham Tech, Reckham. Yeah, I'm learning all that, so great. You're doing we'll good. Coach you. You're doing we'll good. good. <laughs>